USS Gudgeon's patrol in Area 7 continues. We will be moving further southeast into deeper waters for the day. Already at sunrise, our air search radar has picked up multiple aircraft contacts. The Japanese don't seem very happy about the havoc we have caused last night. During a routine sound check, our hydrophone operator picked up two contacts bearing 240 and closing in on our position. An intercept should be relatively easy. The crew is preparing for an underwater torpedo attack, and USS Gudgeon hit the surface to chase them down. Once on the surface, it did not take long for our radar operators to pick up the two contacts. With our great surface speed, it should not be long until our watch crew has visual contact on the enemy. Okay everybody, we have visual contact on the two vessels we have been tracking. They are bearing 026, and we can see them both out there. They both look like fairly large freighters, and my watch crew is spotting them, informing me. We did have a couple of airborne radar contacts to the north of our position, but they were flying north back towards the home island, so I am not too worried about them now. However, we are in a pretty good position. According to radar, this is the target's plot here. They are on a heading of around 115 degrees. And uh, as you can see, we are in a very good position to you know, torpedo them when they cross our path. Let's go ahead and adjust our course ever so slightly. New course. Nine. New course. Nine. Nine. And I'm thinking we will submerge the boat now. Let's go ahead and order periscope depth. These guys are way too far away to actually identify at this point. So we're just going to have to wait for them to close in on our position. They look fairly large, most likely are armed. And with the amount of aircraft flying around, I'd rather not uh, get into a gunfight. So we will strike unseen. That's the current plan anyway. And are they deviating from their course? No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like I've just... Uh, I've botched this up just a little bit. We will get a more accurate uh, plot going here as they close in on us. Well, we are witnessing something interesting here. The enemy freighters are changing course. Which obviously uh, ruins our plans here. It looks like they're now turning southwest. Um, okay, let's adjust course here and increase speed to standard. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to... Uh, we still may be able to pull off an intercept submerged. Thankfully, we have a pretty good underwater speed and it doesn't seem like these two freighters are moving that quickly. All right, let's lower our scope here. Well, we will reassess. I may even bump us up to flank speed. Battery power is at 88%, so we have plenty of juice to get it done. So we were able to get into position once again for a torpedo attack. They do seem to be changing up their course now and again. Uh, additionally, they are going extremely slow, like they are down to a crawl. They're going at a speed of around uh, two and a half knots, according to my uh, readings. 
uh, of course we will reestablish those readings because that is just very peculiar. And we can see it's a good thing we decided not to get into a surface engagement because at least this guy with the razzle dazzle camouflage is armed to the teeth. I have a fairly large deck gun in the bow, something pretty big in the stern as well. Same here, a pretty large gun in the stern and another one in the bow. And I can't make out any other gun platforms, but it looks like there may be some more stuff on the stern here. Regardless, um, yeah, glad I am not shooting it out here. The speed of two and a half knots is very strange. And it, as you can see, they are still changing course. It kind of looks like they are slowly turning south here. I don't really know what to make of this. They made a pretty sharp turn and now, um, yeah, who knows what the heck's going on here. I suppose they'll be easy targets. Let's increase speed to two thirds just to try to close this gap a little bit. Also, uh, I'm fairly certain these are enemy uh, merchant ships. Pretty big identification uh, symbol right there. We'll aim for that. But yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting engagement. I suppose we are in a pretty good position to identify here. Japanese freighter, pretty large funnel, thick and short. Um, kind of these kind of look like troop transports of some kind. Just, I mean, the razzle-dazzle certainly interesting. Here we go. Akasan Maru, 4,541 tons. This is them for sure. We've torpedoed a handful of these. All right, let's get both of these locked in here. And let's see what our range is to number one. A tall mast. Mark, 4,000 yards. Okay, let's go ahead and plug everything else in. Two and a half knots, mark. And angle on bow. Currently, we'll go 40 degrees starboard. Set that in, turn on the tracker. The speed is just, um, I don't know, very strange. And it looks like they may be steadying up on a, on a course here. We'll see. I'll do one more reading. We are getting pretty close to torpedo firing time, and by the looks of things, they are starting to accelerate once again. Target plot shows the merchant ship is moving at a speed of five knots. Looks like they slowed down during the turn, and now they're starting to speed up. I'm thinking we are going to use the Dicko Kane method for this attack. So let's go ahead and change our course slightly and begin to set that up. We are 2,870 yards away from the target. We are going to turn off the position keeper. All right, so angle on bow is going to be 80 degrees starboard for the Deco Kane method. We are passing one minute. I do want to mark that just to see here. What are we cooking with? 1.5, okay. So yeah, they are definitely speeding up quite a lot. All right, we will complete this three minute timer. All right, and we are going to move our scope to three, five, zero and mark that in speed five knots for the time being. All right, and I'm thinking we are going to swing and hit number two here first and then uh, turn our boat and hit number one. That's the plan anyway. Let's drop our scope and wait until for one more minute here, just to get a nice accurate speed reading. Okay, 55 seconds, up scope. All right, passing a minute. Mark. Four and a half knots. All right. I think we're gonna rock five knots. 
Okay, let's change course. Stop. Open tubes one through four. Here we go, folks. Make sure everything is good to go. Like I said, we're going to swing and hit this target first. Make sure our torpedoes are set up. We'll fire tubes one and two. At the first target, torpedo depth. Gonna be nice and shallow. Slow speed to help with the dud issue. Contact pistols for all four fish. There we go. We have a little bit of angle going on, so that should help our Mark 14s as well. Currently making two knots here during this turn. All right, passing target one. You know what? Right full rudder. We'll just hit this one first and then torpedo number two. They're so close. We're so close. What I wanted to do was kind of sync these shots up, but I think it'll just be easier to do it this way. All right, tube one. Get ready to fire. And rudder amidships. Rudder amidships. Get rid of this. Hey, okay, we're going to aim for, I guess, uh, right here. Uh, right for the mast and then the funnel. All right, tube one. Fire. Tube two. I'll wait a little bit until our crosshair meets the funnel. Take a while. Fire. Tube two. tube two away. Left full rudder. Get ready for tube three. Torpedo in the water. Ready rudder amidships here soon. There we go. Rudder amidships. Tube two, or tube three, I'm sorry. Coming right up on that mast. Fire, tube four. Torpedo in the water. We're gonna aim right for that meatball on this one. All right, tube four. Fire, down scope.
Well, that was a pretty successful attack, and surprisingly, all four of our torpedoes actually went off. Number two is going down. All that remains is that one little life raft there. And this ship is taking her sweet time, although she is very low in the water, and it looks like she has developed a slight list to starboard. I do think she will go down as she continues to take on water. It's just going to take some time. So we are going to wait here. Uh, I'll give it probably around 30 minutes or so. And if she's not going under in 30 minutes, we'll send another torpedo her way and uh, get the heck out of here before any uh, enemy warships arrive. Well, that second cargo ship just exploded out of the blue and went down. So that is one torpedo attack, two ships. Overall, quite a good afternoon for USS Gudgeon. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you all on the next one.